Tonight, I've got a special treat for you <laughs> that we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> no, I am going to show you a simpler way to cut uh, mortises on with using a router. So routing mortises. Now, if you've taken any courses with me, you know that I favor the hollow chisel mortiser because pound for pound, it's a fairly inexpensive tool that does a great job. And if you're going to be cutting a lot of mortises, having a hollow chisel mortiser is a great tool to have. But if you don't want to buy a hollow chisel mortiser, or you just don't think you'll be cutting that many mortises in that way, and you want to use the router, I want to show you a technique tonight. And this technique actually will come in handy when you can't use the hollow chisel mortiser. So I hope it's helpful. Hey, if you like this content, check us out at epicwoodworking.com. Uh, become a neighbor. We'd love to have you in the neighborhood, uh, the neighborhood. <laughs> but um, there, let's, let's get started. All right. So what I want to show you is just using a plunge router with a spiral cutting bit and a guide. So I'll have a, a router guide on here. And this is somewhat a simple method. Now I'm going to plunge and just cut a slot mortise in this rail. Now let's just for kicks, let's mark out a little space here. I don't want to hit Let's just put it right here. We'll go between these two and we're going to make it right in this area here. So what I'm going to do is set my router to plunge. I'm going to go down and touch the stop stock. And then this one has a depth setting on the side here. And I just hit the stop and now coming up with my depth setting, I'll bring it up just about three quarters of an inch. So we're going to plunge three quarters of an inch into this piece. Now it would have been nice if I chose a wider piece because it would be more <laughs> stable, but I'll show you a way you can actually make it more stable. So we're going to clamp this onto the bench for our demo. And Let's get it on here. We've got our last session of our end table course coming up right after this. So I've been excited for that finale. That stock is probably from that course, huh? Uh, this is actually a cutoff from, well, one of, not exactly that course, but anyway. Um, so, when I'm on here, I'm a little bit shaky. Okay. See that? Yeah, it, sure. I mean, I'm shaky plus the thing shaky. It's not good. <laughs> all right. So I'm working with a stop. Now, when you plunge your router, the, if you looking down from the top, the router bit is always spinning clockwise. So when it's spinning clockwise like that, it will pull the fence toward the workpiece. If you move from right to left, looking down on it as I am here. So it's, it's pulling toward the lead of the cut is going toward the fence. So as I'm pulling, I want to take advantage of that because I want that fence to stay tight to the workpiece and not come off. So I could just simply plunge in that way and do a plunge like this. Let me just do a little bit here. Okay, so I'm getting a nice clean slot there, but it's a little bit, it's still a little shaky. So as a stabilizing factor, one of the things I like to do is put a guide on the other side. So once you've got your, your adjustment to your distance, you know, how far off the, 
the face of the workpiece you want your mortise. I chose, I just went with three quarters and I'm actually plunging with a three eighths router bit. And this is a, one of the new spiral router bits um, I got a little while ago from Woodpeckers. They're actually making their own bits now. If you saw that, that video we made with them when we took the factory tour, it was unbelievable that. Yeah. They're, they're beautiful. There. They're beautiful bits. Here's, here's one I have here. This one I got with the multi-router. Look at that. I mean, I burned it a little bit, but they're just gorgeous bits. Yes, that's a Band-Aid on my finger. <laughs> and as usual, I didn't cut it doing woodworking. I was cutting vegetables <laughs> at lunch. <laughs> I was using one of those knife things where you slide the cucumber really fast. And I got down to really small and I just, yeah, dumb, right? Anyway, uh, so I've got this against the fence. Now I want to add more stabilization to this. So I'm going to use this straight edge guide this is i use this a lot with the the router quite often in conjunction with the flat plate like this so obviously not that router bit but i like the flat plate because i can double stick tape it to this and if you've seen the the bed course when we've we've plunged in and caught bed rail uh mortises I'll use this plunge method with these straight edges. But in a narrow case like this, when you've got it set and all your pieces are the same, you can just take some double stick tape. And what I'll do here is just put a little tape on, on this rail. Hold on a second. Let me mark the rail. So I'll put the, the straight edge against the workpiece. And then I'm just going to make a short plunge here. So I'm going to mark where the base is of the router. So now coming over here, I'll put a couple pieces of, I don't need much. This stuff, this is carpet tape. It's super strong. You can get it at any, uh, any box store and works great on the bottom of these things. And take this one off here was that a spiral upcut bit Tom did you say uh, actually yes I had to look at it to see what's down cut it is an upcut so it's great for cutting mortises because it's pulling the shavings right out so now I've got that double stick tape in the location so with my fence firmly against the workpiece I will bring this up and stick it to the base. Okay. Now, sometimes if I would like to get a lot of, make sure it's fully seated, I'll just take a little quick clamp like this, just snug that tape, make sure it's sealed. And when that stuff is down, it's, it's awesome. All right. So what's cool about this now is it feels way more stable. I'm not sliding around at all. I've gained stability. I don't feel like it's rocking anymore. So now I've created this really nice custom guide for plunge routing into a workpiece. All right. Now this is one of two methods I'm going to show you. So this is the most straightforward, simplest. So here we go. I'll just do a little plunge in here.
more. Now, you could actually do this at the end of a leg in substitute for this square mortise. Now, the, the, un, the only trickier part is you have those rounded ends. Mm. So if you want to make squared ends, you have to chisel those square, or you can simply round the corners of your tenons so that they fit in there. Now, this is where I'm a little unprepared. I wanted to have... <laughs> A 3 8 tenon ready to show you how it would fit in there. But uh, here, just pretend I've got that. <laughs> See that? Perfect fit. Unbelievable. Oh, I'm envisioning. <laughs> so pretty. Wait, let's see if this tenon fits. <laughs> oh, perfect. Mm. All right, so anyway, that's one way to cut a nice tenon, a mortise. Now that is clean and smooth, and I'm telling you, that upcut bit it's so nice and i don't know i don't want to get a supply of different sizes this is a 3 8 this i'll be using actually on our round chair course which we have coming next week that's an in-shop course so i'm really excited for that in -shop class, and I've yeah been messing around with that craig's got a question how you feel or what you think how woodpecker bits uh compare to american eagle um well to be honest, Craig, I haven't bought from Amer American Eagle for quite a while. I used to buy their bits a lot in the 90s, but for some reason, I got off onto a Mana and Whiteside. Is it Whiteside? Yeah. Um, you know, other bits like that. So I don't know. All I can tell you is they're as good as any bits I've ever used. Of course, I'm using these are pretty sharp still. And they're amazing, but so perfect for for. Uh, Andrew's plotting. asking, do you find the dust extraction helps with mortise cuts? Yes, Andrew. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> you mean the dust extraction I just demonstrated, <laughs> running over to get the vacuum <laughs> mid cut. Yeah, that's that's my slick uh, method. I thought that might be a little. Um, um, well, yeah, you would want. I mean, some of these routers come with housings fitted to do the dust extraction. I don't have it set up on this fest tool right now, obviously, but uh, yeah, it's always helpful. If you're gonna do a lot, this is one of the reasons plunge routing, I find it a little more challenging because it's just getting rid of all, you're creating so much dust versus the hollow chisel mortiser, it's cutting little chips. So it's much. Yeah, John brings up that you can't really see where to stop and where to start very easily. Right, unless you have dust extraction or you could go the other way and have your blower nearby. <laughs> then it's like everywhere in the shop. So. Um, Dennis is asking how you sure your mortise is centered or off-centered accurately. Oh, well, Dennis, I would make test cuts first. I would have a, a piece like this um, and I would set it up. So I just set this to, it was three quarters. And man, it is spot on three quarters. So. I don't have it set for anything in particular right at the moment, but all I did was adjust to the fence, you know, measuring over from the fence to the blade, but it's spot on. So then you want to take off your, your sticky thing and let me unplug this. So play it safe here and you got to get the carpet tape off before I show you this next method. Now this stuff sometimes leaves residue, which can be a pain because it makes the next thing you do very sticky. So I have this general purpose adhesive cleaner always under the bench behind me for just this kind of thing. Works great, Goo Gone, it's great too, but this stuff works really fast. Um, so, what I want to show you is a different method, 
And this one does not use the fence on the router. So we're going to just take this right off. Okay. And what we're going to do use this time is a collar. So this technology, <laughs> this is high tech, is called a guide collar. So it's, it's an inch, sorry, it's a half inch outside diameter, this guide collar. And I want that because I'm going to use the same bit. I've got the 3 eighths bit and it has enough room on the interior. It's like a 3 eighths strong. It's got 3 eighths plus a 30 second. So that would be 7 30 seconds. Is that right? <laughs> no, I'm not saying that right. Yeah, that's right. 7 30 seconds. So these guide collars, if you're not familiar with them, they come in sets. This is my beautiful brass set that someone sent me. It's so nice. I've used it a few times. I like it a lot. It doesn't have any missing like some of my old ones, <laughs> like, like this one. <laughs> but anyway, they are great because they come with all the different collars and you can use them for the appropriate bit and the kind of guide work that you're doing. So with this one being a half inch outside diameter and given I'm going to be running a 3 8 bit, I'll have a 16th inch offset on each side. So you can use that as a, with just a straight edge and just consider the offset and you can get a good plunge route slot. But there's another way to use these and that's to make a guide channel similar to something like this. So you make a slot and that guide collar, I mean, that fits so nicely, it doesn't even fall out, but that's perfect. So that guide collar goes in there, then you plunge, and then you just slide along your channel. It shows you exactly, it, it takes all the mystery out of it. It's not gonna slip and it stops at the end, you know? But once again, you have that issue of getting things getting clogged, you gotta stop, get the dust out, make sure it's clear, especially before the last cleaning cut, okay? So let me just show you one, one way you could make these slots is you could simply take a half inch router bit and with a straight edge, just use that and plunge and make a slot. And then that half inch slot will be the guide for your collar in which you'll be running a 3 8 uh, bit. Now, this is a technique that some of you may know already because we use this quite extensively on the Adirondack chair project. Remember that one? <laughs> we, uh, we made a curve groove in the template for the seat slats and you had to first make the groove. I mean, the template with a 5 8 slot and then you ran a half inch collar in there and you got your whole uh, seat set that way, seat slats in that way. And then we also plunge routed for the tenants. But I want to show you just another way. Rather than making plunging and making a groove and then getting us the collar to fit that plunge bit, you can just rip some strips and create that gap like I did. And it's it was so easy and it just takes a little bit you got to glue it up. So let's, let's look at this, this little demo I have here. So here's a couple pieces of, um, let me see if I can get them the way they were. That looks pretty close. I guess it was like that. Okay. So this is just quarter inch. Um, what would this be? Uh, six mil. Um, Baltic birch. Okay. So I've got two straight edges there and let's say I want to make this into a guide for my router bit. Now my router bit collar. So I want the spacing to be a half an inch. So all I did was I went to the table saw and I ripped a longer strip of this and came over and checked it 
between two pieces like this, squeezing it together, and then seeing if it was tight enough. Now that's, that's pretty good. It's, it's really flowing easily. I could stop there, but let's say it was a little bit sloppy. Then all you have to do is take these little pieces out and you just give them a quick sand like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now we got two pieces equally sanded. And now let's see how it fits. Ah, that's a little bit more snug. That's perfect. I don't want it to fight it, but that, that's sliding along. There is no play in that, but I can move it easily. So now I know I have a perfect spacers for a half inch slot. Now here's the other thing. You can easily set up the distance of the slot by just chopping whatever material uh, a little smaller, not as, uh, not as wide as the inch, but to whatever length you want. So I just chopped this piece an inch and a half, which here's a question for you, a little test. If I make an inch and a half long space, how long is my mortise going to be? Do, 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 do. Well, if we go back, remember we're using a 3 8 router bit with a one half inch collar, 16th uh, offset on each side. So at each end of the gap, you lose a 16th. So instead of an inch and a half, you'll be making an inch and three eighths long slot. So you wanna size your, your spacer an eighth inch longer than you want your actual mortise, okay? I know a lot of you got that. I was just <laughs> playing along. I know, I probably didn't have to say that. But when you wanna set this up, all I do is, um, I don't have my official, let's use the back side of this. All right, it's pretty messy, but whatever. So I just want to glue this on. So all I would do, I know, let me, let me bring up this piece of plywood. <laughs> MDF, I mean. Here we go. Just a little help. It's a little bigger than it needs to be, yeah. So. Are you moving that over? Can that adhesive be used on wood to remove? I'm sorry, that, that adhesive remover be used on wood? Um, it's not usually, you know, it's great to take off like decals bumper stickers, you know, it's that kind of great adhesive uh, remover. So anyway, let's say now I want to set up for this. See this piece, this little spacer, it's, it's plenty of room that way, but it's the inch and a half long. So all I would want to do is take a little bit of glue here. Oh, wow. Let's just pretend I do this. I put some glue on there and there glue on there and there and then I would set it in here with my spacer end to end bring that up okay and then I just set a couple clamps on there I could tape across it let's just put it over here you get the idea just snug that up and then I would do the same on the other and just keep it good and flat about 30 minutes and then take it away and you'll have the spacer like that. Okay. And that's what I ended up with. Now this one, I just tacked a straight edge and by coming on the underside like this, I could measure exactly to this wall away. So let's say I want that if I wanted that, my mortise to be seven eighths from this fence, I would want to put it three quarter plus a sixteenth, and then I'm going to gain another sixteenth, which will put me the seven eighths in there. All right. Now to use this, I don't know if this piece is wide enough. It's not. Um, 
Do you have any other wood around? I guess I can use this. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to use this. All right, so I wanted to go into the end grain for you. Yeah, do I have any other wood? <laughs> I, don't, I don't have the right size right at the minute. I need something thick, you know, for this because it's kind of wide and I'm not going to get the whole thing. But let's just use our piece here again. This will work well as a demo because it's the same situation, right? So I'm just going to put a clamp here. So once you have this template, you're not limited by anything. You could, this works great into any form. I don't even need a straight edge along an edge. I, I just have now this gap. I, can, I could tack it to a surface at whatever angle I wanted very quickly and then bring my router up. get my safety gear on and whoops I need my collar here's the right guide collar so just slide that in there this one I could actually pop that plate out but I'm just gonna screw this on looks like a light switch cover yeah, a little bit, doesn't it? Okay, so we just lock in our collar. Now it fits right into the groove, and here we go. Get my vacuum. All right, let's make sure we're all the way. <laughs> Take off our gear. And there you have it, a perfect mortise, nice and clean and very accurately right where we wanted it. So. The big issue is the dust, dust extraction. That's a challenge when you're plunge routing mortises like this. So if you're doing it all the time, factory type setting, of course you would have vacuum type attachments to make that happen. So anyway, that's a crash course in <laughs> using your router for plunging and cutting mortises in two different ways, a fence and the guide collar system. Many options for this method. Any other questions? Yeah, Tony was asking, could you use a router fence on both sides too? Um, with the collar method? Might have been a ways back because it was oh. another question. Maybe. I'm not sure if you can put another fence on the router. Uh, I just double stick tape a uh, piece, but there probably are routers that have the double fences. So yeah probably could. I think there actually is an attachment for the Festool now that you mention it, Tony. <laughs> or, or I'm thinking about the um, Domino maybe. There's a, a type of guide that hits both sides, but yeah. not for the router. So. Awesome. Okay. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for being part of this. Hey, if you want to be part of that course, check out the uh, <laughs> website at epicwoodworking.com. Last session, you can always get in still. So thanks for hanging out with us. Nice to be in the shop for a little bit. And on behalf of the camera lady and myself, look forward to seeing you next time right yes. back here next on week. Shop Night Live. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thank you.